Well, let's rock and roll, Dale. Lucky 13, how? Yes, mate. Lucky 13. And two cobras in a row. Oh, I'm, all, I'm not cobbered out. No, true. I'm, I'm enjoying it. And the funny thing is, we're starting with a complete one. Yes. So the photo that I've got right in front of us was the car that I went and looked at when I was um, got the call to go and have a look to see whether I'd be interested in restoring yep. it. And, of course, I'm walking up the drive going, hmm. That looks all right. That looks pretty good. But, you know, it's a bit <laughs> like... Um, <laughs> Having a, having a nice dress, I guess, but it's, um, it's yeah. It's like you didn't have these on. <laughs> it was um, a car that had had plenty of use. Yep. And um, this particular gentleman had bought it um, with the plan, you know, to get that style of car. Mm -hmm. And this one's number 66. Clickety click. And the reason, yeah, <laughs> the, reason he, <laughs> the reason he bought it was that's his number. Oh, cool. All right, so my number's 13, as you know, or yep. his number's 66. So that's that's how the whole process started. And I'm just going to run through some some shots of it as we got it. Yep. So these shots now, the engine and the engine bay. And the six little holes in the, the mm, bonnet. That's interesting. I don't quite understand why there were six, but anyhow, there were six holes under the scoop. And you'll see later on that we changed all that to make it look mm -hmm. like it, um, how they did them from the factory. Yep. And you can see underneath here, it's got the big front sway bar, polyurethane bushes and all that sort of stuff. And once we got in and started having a look, we come to realise that this car had um, done a probably a bit of circuit work. Mm. And when I went and found some photos, or did some research on number 66, I'd yep. found that it had been sold by muscle car sales a couple of times. Okay. And in one of those, it actually had a bond cage in it, like an aluminium oh, cage. Yep. And it had the blue triangle on the boot to show where the, where battery, the battery was yep. and all those sorts of things. Yep. So it had clearly had a bit of bit of track work. A bit of pedigree. Right? And and it had a few changes. So yep. um, it, was, uh, it wasn't the original motor. So um, they've actually got the original matching number, yep. but the motor in it wasn't the matching. And, okay. and we then changed it again. So it's still not the matching. Yep. Um, and we'll see all that as we go in. So the shot here of the boot with the Cobra sign there, you can see the, I guess the dent in the fiberglass. The ripple. <laughs> which is which is the rust on the other side pushing the fiberglass. Yes. So yep. we'll see some of that. And I just want to point out the gap and the way that spoiler fits because you'll, as we said last time. That's not a gap. <laughs> the, amount of, the amount of work it takes. And you can yeah. see here when you shut the boot, the spoiler used to hit and was rubbing oh, the paint dear. off. And the more you got into it, yep. the more we found. And, some and, it, and it had a, a really big sound system in it. Okay. Well, it would have been really big back in the day. Okay. Yeah. So, it, as you can see there, so a yep. couple of big subwoofers in the boot and a few <laughs> amps. And it had dual batteries in the boot and a couple of sentries tucked away in the, yep. the side panels. So, it was a case then of sort of going <laughs> through the process. So, yeah, that's the dash. So, yep. old Al, Alan Moffat had signed it back yep. in 20 something um, and obviously they'd cut the dash up pretty well to put some mm. aftermarket gauges and a and a stereo and that sort of like the head unit for the stereo yep. so the aim my aim initially and at this point Damien that owned 400 was still working with us okay so I got him on the job to actually start pulling out all the extras mm. so all of that sound Redundant. system yes all of the wiring and then it had a fairly complex um, security alarm in it as well. Okay. So we pulled all that out while yep. the car was complete so we yep. could make sure it still ran and we yes. hadn't done something. Yeah, that we don't immobilise it before you pull it apart. Exactly right. <laughs> and then I don't know whether you've done it, Dale, but this thing had been dynamated um, not fairly to, substantially. Not to that extent. <laughs> but what I was going to say whether you've done it is whether you've had to take it off because it's not a lot of fun. No. So that's Damien there with the job. So he's got the heat gun and all sorts of things just trying to get all that black, bloody, gooey shit off. Mm, the tar. <laughs> so we went around the process of, of stripping it all out yep. and there's a shot there of the seatbelt mount and I've put that in just to give you an idea that all the parts were there mm. but this car was getting pretty tight. Yeah. So once we started pulling things apart... I got a little bit concerned when I seen that red oxide because mm. it shouldn't be there. No. So I'm trying to think, well, why, when and why did that happen? And, yes. and who would know when it happened? But it, the car actually had a top loader in it. Okay. So these came out with a single rail and it had a top loader in it, which would have been put in it for the circuit 
mm-hmm. type stuff. So, you know, a little bit more of a out of the floor and a, mm. a few odds and ends. And even a tuck here and there. Yep. So we worked our way through. So that's the top loader and the big blocks of aluminium moved the shifter over to get it to line up. <laughs> so I don't know how that would have been to use, but mm. I've seen that on a few other cars. Yeah, not the so first it's time. not yeah. So once again, more dynamat. Yep. There's the old sentry sitting in there. And we just left one battery in so we could move okay. it around until we pulled the motor out. Yes. And then away we go. We start stripping it down to see what we've got. And this car um, had been rust proofed. Okay. And it, it, I don't know whether it was done by Ming, but they used to, I don't know if you've ever heard yes, of Ming rust, Ming rust proofing. Yep. Yep. Well, they used to drill holes everywhere in the car mm. and then pump all of the bitumous based stuff in and then put plastic plugs in the holes. Well, you'll see later on where we're welding all those holes up. <laughs> but the upside of that is yeah. the car didn't have much rust. Okay. And for a coupe, that's unusual. That's, that's the exception. For a hard top. <laughs> hard top. Coupe. Um, so it had a few front end bits that had been replaced, mm. some lower cross mem- uh, lower wishbones and all that sort of stuff, and the big sway bar. And once when we pulled the diff apart, it had... Um, a different center in it okay. and it had some billet axles and things so that you know the more we go the more mm. we find that yeah this thing's had a fair hammering um and it had a 27 gallon tank big tank yeah so yeah. they're still quite hard to find and no one makes one so they're, yeah. they're quite unique still and you'll see the process we go through to, to save that so then we start pulling everything apart mm. to work out what we've got what we can use and what we're going to do about it and now this shot of the floor become a bit of a concern. Mm. And clearly at some point in time on the track, it had blown a rear uni. Yes. And the, the old... Tail shaft flop. interaction with the floor. Mm. Yes, much, very much so. <laughs> Flopping around. So you'll see it later on where we fix that. So the reason I have all these photos, a lot of people sort of say to me, I don't know how you have all these photos. It's a bit like if you're going to pull a clock apart, you take photos as you go. Well, we mm. do that with the whole car. Plus, the owner of the car gets these photos, so he yep. he then or she then gets a, a record of what they've got. Mm. So those parts now now have been cleaned up and stuck out in the sun to dry out, and it gives us a record of what we've got, but also the owner what he's paying for. Yeah, all the viewers think he's got a good memory, but he just takes a lot of photos. photos exactly right. <laughs> now, I deliberately put the full set of photos of the planet yep. in now. I wouldn't recommend anyone to do a, a, an extensive job on one of these cars without having a look inside the planner, either with a camera, but even with a camera, I'd still probably pull the top off. So this yep. goes through the process of drilling out all the spots Picking and apart. Yep. working your way down through to get the top off of the planner, as you can see there now. And see the blue in the middle there, Dale? It's interesting, we talked last time about they were a blue car. Yes. So that's when I did um, 400, I painted in there blue right so I, I painted the top of the plenum blue and let it blow through so that you end up with that look factory look factory look yeah there you go but that just reconfirms what yeah we've always said yep so this particular time there was some rust running down um the half kick panels mm-hmm. and a little bit on the, the the firewall where it meets the plenum so we took the whole plenum off and then i went about making up bits and pieces to repair the rust yep and all the little spots of weld there is where we've drilled out the spot welds. Yes. And I'm going to then use those top holes to weld it up. But you normally end up marking the lower a little bit. And yep. I normally just go around and put a bit more weld on those to make sure that there's plenty there when you yep. go to plug it. And then all of those, um, the vents and the brackets, I always take those off, mm. clean them up, blast them. You go into all this trouble, do it properly. Yeah, put the weld through primer no shortcuts. on it and then put them back together again. Mm. So this has been an XC, those vents are square. Right. We're on the AB there, oval. Oval, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. no one actually makes um, this lower yet for an XC. They make okay. it for the AB, but not for the XC. Um, so that's now welding those vents back on. Yep. And you can see the real square one on the what is the passenger side. It's looking healthier now. So that's looking real good. And then into the booth for some epoxy. Yep. And obviously 
we've been to the blaster, and I would say there's a fair chance after we did all the work, I might have got it re-blasted. Mm. Um, and then a coat of normally 2K black yep. epoxy, then the black 2K, and leave the edges where we're going to weld, and then we put the weld through primer on that. And then that all goes back on, and then we've got to go around and do all those plug welds. Yes. Joy. There's a few. And you can see there I've got it taped off. That's just to stop the splatter and all going yes. in and burning into the paint because mm. I've you know, been caught before. Mm. So you can see that on the right-hand side there, the welds have been cleaned up. Now we're putting those hats back on that, that yep. join the rail to the, to the plenum. And there's two or three shots of that now and we move through to it's getting to a point where it's been cleaned up to be able to put some um, epoxy over the whole lot yep. again and then urethane before we actually paint. And this is on the on the driver's side, it's got that small bracket. To get the plenum off, you've actually got to cut the rail a little bit, Yeah. get the plenum off, put that back, bit back on, weld it up, then the top piece goes on, then the hat, like that with the, yep. the plug welds. Grind all those up and then there's the, that piece there is the bit we cut off right. to be able to get the plenum out. Yep and then we weld that back up and clean it up and the three welds across the bottom that's as close as i can make it look like someone on the production line did it mm. got to be a little bit rough <laughs> you <laughs> make, it, make, make it look right too, too perfect so that's you know coat of epoxy yeah yep. it's all looking good and then those outer brackets go on mm. and the early xas didn't have that bracket okay and the cars must have been a bit of flex a bit, a bit mm. of play so they put that bracket on, and then the late LTDs, which is the same A-pillars and all yes. of these, they actually put a bracket from that one down to the silt. Oh, okay. So if you're sort of going to go and race one, it's mm. probably a thought that mm. you could add that extra bit in. And then there's the little tiny bracket at the top with the welds on it now that ties the whole lot back together. Right. And I'll put this one in now. This, this you know, belongs up further, but I'll put yep. this in now to show that once you've done all that welding, you've then got a little bit of bog work to do up on the plenum to make it look factory. Mm. But my aim with all these cars is to maintain um, the pressing. Yeah, yeah the characteristic so, so, of So it's, they look factory. Yeah. Yeah. So once we got that done, and I don't know the exact sequence because it's a few years ago now, but the, the plan was to get the car blasted, but before it went to the blaster, I wanted to strip the paint off it. So rather than, I don't like to get the external panels blasted. Mm -hmm. I like to either paint strip or mechanically strip. So in this case, because it had a fair bit of paint in most areas on it, we actually used the 150 mil orbital mm -hmm. and took a large proportion of the, of the product off it. And then stuck it was, it. It was blue, Howard, underneath all that. It was blue underneath. <laughs> you can see all the different colours. And then we went through the paint strip process, yep. and you can see the glad wrap there. So you paint, the, put the paint stripper on. I yep. just used poly stripper from Bunnings. Yep. Put plenty of it on. Put the glad wrap on. That keeps it all moist. Yes. And depending on what the paint is, if it's just normal Ford paint, it, it blisters up and comes off beautiful. When I did the bonnet on my panel van, mm. it come off like jelly. Yes. It was really different. So mm. you can see there now, that's probably the second go um, with the stripper. And then there's Damo on the, the scraper, just taking yep. all that off. And the reason it's got the patches on it, that's where when he's used the sander, he's gone through to the metal. Right. So if you, if you just paint strip, it comes out like looking like brand new panels. Mm. But normally, They've had a bit of work. Yes. You know, there's very rare a they've a, come out with the dent somewhere. Nothing. And I think that photo is probably in because you can see someone's put a jack under the outer edge of the. <laughs> Just and I mean, all these bit. cars were a bit like that. Yeah. And then there was a bit of a something going on in the sill, as you can see there, mm. and someone's just give it a whack and a, a bit of bog. <laughs> Ventilation. But because this car had been paint stripped, the sills were really good. It was just that back corner. Yeah, with all the rust proofing. And, and on the XC, yep. there's a second little panel that goes in. Be when you come in from the back of the car, mm -hmm. about four inches in, there's an additional piece in there that's not in the XB. Right. And that traps a bit of rubbish in there. Ah, and okay. that's why I think they rust in that area. So that's that bit where that bog was. Yes. So we've taken the end plate off. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting to see another photo, but it's the roof. <laughs> so I'll go back to that in a minute. Yeah. So you can see right at the top of that, you can see it's 
obviously been stripped and then deoxidated. It's got those yep. nice lines in it. And then I've gone over that now with the, with the file mm. and looking for the dents. How, how many low points do we find? Yeah, that's it. And I mean, so the, the trick now is, is take the opportunity to, yep. to knock it up and work our way through to um, minimise the amount of filler we're going to have. Mm. And now we can see the damage from that um, tail shaft. Floppy so, tail shaft. The issue was is that it's the major part of the floor, mm. so we just need to fix it. So I had Darren on one side and me on the other. Mm. We had the hammer and the dollies and the flippers and whatever, Enough. and probably spent a good half a day pushing it around. Yep. And the, the seat braces already needed to be done. Okay. And I opted to take, there's a second bracket that goes up under the console. Mm -hmm. We took that off as well, this one, yep. with the gold on it there. And removed all of that to make it a little bit easier to get in there mm. and straighten it up. Put the weld through on it, welded that back on. All the other bits of weld is just where it, the floor was a bit um, bit thinner or been cracking a bit. And got it back looking pretty good. Mm. And then you can see there now the cross member, we've just taken the bottom off that. That's a pretty standard sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether we mentioned it before, the six cylinder had a flat plate and then the V8 had a step one. Okay. And now um, we actually offer a, um, like a, a concourse looking one, but on the inside it's got a bit of eight mil plate. Right. So that when you put the jack under it, it doesn't bend it. And when you go through the spoon drain, it's a bit stronger. Mm -hmm. So that's the, this one we just put a standard plate on it, I think, yep. by memory, a concourse one. Um, so it's still obviously in bare metal from the blaster. Mm. I've got that roof now flipped up and I would have been working my way around um, the quarters and I've still got the plenum out of it. And this is a really good example of how little rust there was. Mm. So you've seen some of the others, like Darren's car was the bottom was rusted out, it Didn't had been exist. repaired, then yeah. rusted out again. <laughs> and here's this car with that whole corner. Yeah, so that's um, the original, not a, not a rusty looking rust brand repair. New, yeah. Because that would have been rust proofed, yes. but up around the back window. So this photo's um, the boots on the left and the windows on the bottom corner, yep. all those holes, and then someone's been in there with the bronze, mm. filling up the holes. So there'll be some photos when we get to the rust repair side of it where we've actually repaired all of that. So this this is really from the blaster, cleaning up, working out what we've got to do. And then it's obviously been put into epoxy now, and I'm just going through repairing what I believe needs to be repaired. Yep where normally with a coupe, you would take that panel off and put a new one on. But this thing was so good mm. because of that rust proofing, I believe, yep. that I opted not to do that. So you can see there now the, the black bits, the boot floor, mm -hmm. um, we've placed those. And then this is now the front, left-hand front guard, and that's the aerial hole. And okay. I had to laugh because someone had welded it up. <laughs> so I had to clean it all up and drill it back in because we were going back to original. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it had an aerial in the roof. You know they Yeah, the center the center, center aerial. aerial. Yep. Yep. Had one of those in it. And the owner sort of went, Oh, can we keep that? I go, Oh, not really. No. <laughs> he said, I oh, weren't they factory? I said, No. No. A lot of dealers probably fitted them, but they weren't they definitely weren't from the from forward. So um the guards there are stripped, so these were all um paint stripped. Yes. And obviously we were running out of room because we we're still doing four hundred at this stage because we're in the spray booth and we've got glass and rubbers and panels and all sorts of stuff mm, going on. Space was at a premium. So the stuff hanging in the booth there now, obviously we've sent another load out to the, the blaster. So we've yep. been stripping panels by the look of it. So the guards have got all the inners out of them, um, the boot and the bonnet stripped. So I think I've got a run now of photos on the guards. So when you're doing this level of car, I like to pull those, um, the inners out of the, the guard and clean all those up, fix the rust, paint them either with a, like a chassis type paint like POR15 or yep. KBS or something like that, or 2K, and I'm, I'm more than happy just to use the 2K. And then the same where the, the masking is there, from there back I would paint that as well. Yes. Then weld it all back together and then paint the rest of it. So here we are now welding those back in. So you can see across the bottom where the the vice grips are there, the, the holes mm -hmm. to take the plugs, and now we've plugged it. And this is one of those holes from the, <laughs> the rust proofing. 
Yes. So obviously that was seen to be a potential rust area, so they just whack a hole in yeah. there, put the nozzle in, give it a squirt. Fill her up. Fill her up, all good. So we've done the same thing, and we put a little bit of steel in, <laughs> fill it up to make it good. Now, this just emphasises that. So we've seen plenty of these panels before with nothing mm. on the inside. Yes. Look at the amount of black yeah. goo, whatever they use. Rust preventative goo. material. Yeah. Yeah. Goo. So you can see the amount they've, they've you know, got inside the holes and squirted yeah. it in. But of course, where the double overlap is, not a chance. So no. it's worthwhile stripping it off. But you can see just how clean that's come up. Mm. Um, so we've done those inside and out. And then I spoke about this last time, I didn't have a photo. So this is upside down. So it's the sill panel at the top and yep. then the, the quarter between the, the door and the rear guard. That particular slot's prone for rust. So right. I normally weld it up and then run the blade through and then reshape it so it looks original, but it's welded. Right. So you're not gonna get any bleed back. Mm. You know, And I'm talking 10 years time. Yeah. Because we haven't taken the quarter off, I don't know what's in there. No, that's right. Even though the thing's been rust proof. So my aim is to try and give my customer something that's going to last them for mm. a long time. Must be something about upside down photos, Dale. So there's the quarter panel upside down as well. And obviously I've got it up there with my hand in there trying to... We're just testing the audience. Flip up if they know the panel, yeah, what, what yeah. the panels look like. Yeah. And then this is that gadget that we've seen a few times now that um, we made up to pull that quarter back up. So where mm. the petrol cap is, yep. they always seem to be in. And I think part of it's to do even when, if, if, if the car's been pulled apart and that a few times, yep. when you go to put the rubber hose on the inside, if you pull on that, yes, it can tweak the, yep. the quarter. Doesn't take much. So you can see I've had the file on it and there's a few dents, so yep. I'm pulling that out. Well, there's a lot of dents, but look at that. <laughs> so work my way right along, and then that would have been um, black scotch bright. Yes. It looks like it's ground or 40 grit mm. or something, but that would have been scotch. I'm, I'm not a fan of... No, using um, a really aggressive... Scotch yeah, I don't like it, really yeah, good. I don't like that aggressive sanding mm. on the panels. Um, I just normally use the scotch bright, and then when you go back with the deoxidine, it comes back to yep. that nice matte look. So this is the, the back corner of the window looking from the roof down, and what we're doing now is that little corner always rusts out, and we've made up the pieces to fill... Yep. like it is there finished um, and it was a press piece from the factory okay and we now offer one that's pressed that goes in that hole but at this point in time we we're just making one up out of a couple of pieces so just over from that now this is the rear parcel shelf mm -hmm. so between speakers on the left and the panel between the boot and the window on the right yep and that's that whole boot corner. So we've actually had to make a few little pieces to go in there. And at this point in time, we were still, um, the only option we had was the rear spares press panel. Right. And then we hadn't got to a point where we were reshaping that. And this one was not too bad, so I opted to repair it because I wanted to have the nice edge and all on mm. it. Um, and like everything, once we got started, you sort of go, oh, maybe I should have used a new one. Yeah. <laughs> But we repaired it, or I repaired it, and got it all back together. And then because it had the big stereo in it, they'd cut all the speakers yeah. and everything out of it. So we managed to get a, I think you might have already had it from another job, a, a, the speakers out of a sedan. Okay. And we welded those in. Um, once again, I've got someone pressing those now, mm. and you can buy the speaker repair bit, and you can buy the whole shelf now. So that would have been the op easy option. Now, here's the photo that I was looking for earlier at the end of the sill. Yeah, we just stuck a few in between. Yeah, yeah. so we've just got to do a repair on that. So I've obviously repaired it now, but I put this in to show. So see the yellow tape in the middle? Yep. That's a broomstick with a wire brush on it mm. and the air gun. We take the end off front and back of the sill so you can put a light in there and look all the way through and then run the wire brush all the way through and then paint it. Yep. And it saves us having to have to take seals off when mm. the seals were fine. But I wanted to yep. make sure they're clean. Yeah, you got and to inspect it, haven't you? you yeah, well, I want to clean it and clean and it up and, clean and it. get some paint in there. Yep. And then before, when the car's finished, we then either um, fish oil yep. um, or cavity wax inside there yep. once the car's finished because it all runs out through the, the drain holes in mm -hmm. the bottom. 
So the bit that goes over the end there, normally rust, which is the bit on the left, obviously. So we're just making the right-hand side one because they've got this little funny notch in them from mm. the factory. And I think I've mentioned this before. The notch is there because the sill panel sticks out too far. Right. So rather than change the sill panel, they put a dent in that. Hmm. Makes sense, do. yeah. So if you're not, if you're not <laughs> doing concourse, you can just trim the end off the sill yeah. and you don't need that bit. But if you're doing concourse, you need it. Yep. So that's it made up out of a couple of pieces and then plug weld back in. Now the next one with that's, the little dot the, in the middle. That was the aerial, wasn't it? That's the aerial hole. There you go. So we've just, um, it was quite a big hole. <laughs> it was only a little hole. Got a hole saw. 20 cent piece. Got yeah. a hole saw and made, okay. made the piece yep. and then tacked it in and welded up and wouldn't know it was I'd normally use like a brand new 40 grit flapper mm -hmm. and just lightly yep. get my shape get and flush. then run the file over it as you can see it's had the file backwards and forwards and there it is the oxidine all looking lovely beautiful you know a bit of a flip and a bang to yep. take it out we've been welding so I talked about I took the bottom off the plenum because of the rust so you can mm -hmm. see here the corners cut out of that um, between the the kick panel and the firewall there's a few photos of that, and this is the little piece we've made up to replace the rusty part. Mm. So it fits in there and gets welded in, cleaned up all around, and then same on the other side. It was a very good car for rust, but it wasn't rust free. No, no. <laughs> I always laugh when someone says, they're in out and they go, oh, how you going? Yeah, good, good. I got a coupe. It's pretty much rust free. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, eh? Let's see what happens when you come back from the blaster. Yeah. This car was probably as good as as good as, as you've as seen. As good as anyway. I've seen for yeah. sure. So here we are, Mr. Ming again. Mm. So there was a few of them. <laughs> so that's why the seals were good because yeah. they'd ripped along yeah. there and put a whole heap of holes in it. And then following on on the same theme is all of the extras that have been added into the engine mm. bay. So it had you know trendy light lights with extra boxes and all yes. sorts of things in the bay 27 air horns all sorts of all things sorts of on. things yeah. so we welded up all the the extras and I, I can't remember whether we took i think we might have replaced the panel on the back of that that's right at the front under the radiator support yep and then started cleaning all that up to get some epoxy on it so get it back looking good and you'll see when we get to the filler photos that we put a little bit of filler in there but just enough to repair the damage we'd done Mm. rather than actually trying to um, show car it. Yeah, we weren't trying to make flat firewalls yeah. and all sorts of things like that. So that's underneath, and you can see the floor now is looking a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Remembering this is going to get some stone guard and stuff on it, but it's interesting with stone guard, it doesn't cover dents. No. It just means the dents go in and the <laughs> stone guard goes they in and out. They flow a bit better. Yeah. Exactly right. They, with this car, I opted to repair a lot of the the little rust problems mm -hmm. and keep the existing metal rather than pull it all apart and change it yep um, and at that point in time the the gutter for the boot wasn't available and this was like so good it was still rusty but it was yeah. really good so we, we i chose to do it that way and then that's a, a shot there of it, it all finished in metal uh, with some epoxy on it and really good clean mm. factory car so Long doors, hinges are always worn out. Yes. So top hinges, bottom hinges, um, we just yeah, rebush those. Yep. I must have thought they were hinges when I was doing because that's the brakes, but uh, not to worry. So there, there they are all ready to go. Um, and all of those parts that you see, obviously all have to get hung in the booth, mm. sprayed, cleaned, and work their way through. And at what point are you testing the boot rubber and that sort of thing out? So you've you've gone and done that. Yeah, so where it was there complete, I'd have the rubber on it. Yep. And I'd close it. And because we have no panels off the car, yep. from a from a, a gap point of view, the right. only panel that we had an ability to make any adjustment was the back window panel. Right. Um, but to get heights and all right, you can manipulate that edge to get mm. the heights right. So I normally put the rubber on, yep. shut the bonnet, have all the latches and all on it yep. to make sure everything's going to work before we okay. ever get anywhere near primer. Yep. Yeah, sure. Otherwise you just get caught out. Yep. So the doors, we, um, we de-skinned all the doors. Mm -hmm. So th this is obviously, you can see there the rust behind the hinges and things. Just a little. Um, so as we spoke 
because the last one was an XC, these have got the bigger intrusion bars in them. Yes. And once again, Mr. Ming had been in there, so they were pretty mm. good. And we just use a heat gun with a scraper, you know, like a normal paint scraper for yep. doing the house. You know, about a, a three or four inch scraper with a heat gun. And you've got to be careful. If you turn that up on its edge, and you, you'll groove the panel. Mm. You'll actually leave a mark on yep. the other side. So you, you've got to take your time and, and be careful about it. You can see on the left-hand side front corner there, there's a bit of rust that we needed to mm -hmm. repair. And we've, I've spoken before about when we remove these, we leave the inner on the inside of that. We'll yep. see how it's missing. So I dare say there was a bit of rust yes. to be seen there. And this particular panel, I've had the blaster run around the outside edge. So we've stripped it all. Yep. And then I would have said to him, because the rust would have been heavier than I would have liked, mm -hmm. to get in there with the blaster lightly and just run around the edge. I notice a lot of the resto shops have little hand blasters. Okay. We just don't have enough room to have that yep. facility. So cleaning up, making bits and pieces. So the inner shells, the old car audio boys had um, made a bit of a mess. <laughs> and we had... Hack, hack, hack. We had yep. some rusty doors that we were able to get some parts out of because mm. the, the shells were good, mm. but they'd just been cut up. So we took the pieces we needed to repair the, the shells. I guess at some point in time, someone will make these, but at the moment, we've still got to repair them. Yes. Um, so the skins are being made now for the doors, um, for people that need them. So you can see there that the city on the lower, and the lower's painted inside, and then the top's painted. Mm -hmm. And the last lot of POR I got, I didn't realise, was a satin. So that's why it looks like a new old stock panel or something. <laughs> it's actually satin POR. So there's one painted and the other not and then reassembled, hammered up, yep. welded, masked up, ready for some epoxy and some primer, I would imagine. No, the epoxy then filler. Well, there we go, just like magic, Dale. So mm. we've now got our epoxy on. Good sequence. Yeah. Um, so I've obviously done gaps, and I don't have a lot of photos from this car because we didn't need to do a lot. Mm. Um, I actually, when I went through all the, ref all the photos we did of it, it was interesting and someone ran me the other day about it. The actual door on the car is a complete car. On one side went from eight mil to 14 mil on the bottom gap and all mm. the other gaps looked okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a fair how, bit of variance in these cars. How, how does that happen? Yeah. And we weren't, we weren't looking to make this a show no. car, a bit like 400, yep. but we also didn't want ridiculous gaps on it. Yep. So I put this in because people like to see how I do and what I do trying to get the door to match the quarter and all that mm. sort of stuff. When these are assembled, that a, um, B pillar, you know, where your door closes, yes. the quarter goes on and they spot weld it. Mm. And there's probably a good, you know, he'd be in five or out five. So there's probably a 10 mil variance when that goes in the factory yep. and the bloke goes bang, bang, clip, clip. So when I've gone to, to get this, it just, I couldn't get it to line up. No. So I've run the one mil blade down it. And I mean, once you cut that, you just push it with your thumb and it moves. Yeah. Tack put it, it. Put it where you like. Shut the door. Yep. Yep, that's what I need. Weld it back up again. It's a, it's a quick, easy fix. Now, I'm not a panel better, hmm. but I just develop a way to go, well, it doesn't fit, so I better hmm. cut it and make it fit. So whether that's the right or the wrong thing, I don't know, but it works. Hmm. So everything's in epoxy now. Doors are on. Quarters look good. Doing the gaps, so Check, I did have a photo. Checking the gaps. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say with the amount of the amount of steel showing on yes, the front, there's a bit, had of work, a bit of work there. Had a bit of work going on. So there's 400 in the background. Yep. And checking that rear spoiler. So it's looking good. So this is where I get to that point where I get everything on. I'm happy with where it's going. Before we get to mm. filler, then we do filler, then we do it all again, then we do primer, and then we go to paint. You can never trial fit enough, can you, Howard? Trial, trial, trial. Mm. Because this happens. So this is the original. <laughs> this is the original rear valance yes. or stone tray, yep. depending on which what you want to call where, it. where yep. you grow up. Must have hit me thumb, Dale. <laughs> that. So the lower quarter and the, it just don't fit. So by the photo, I'm at bog stage, and I obviously thinking it's all factory, so it'll be fine. So I've gone and trial fitted it and went no it's mm, not no. so then i've obviously made some mods to get it to work 
and then I would have sanded all that back up and re-epoxied and then mm. got the bog back out again. But I mean, that's me wanting it to be nice because from factory it wouldn't have been. Because that would have stood out like a sore thumb if you yeah, tried well, to... Yeah, like my sore thumb was a band-aid. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the bonnet there is, I got rid of the six holes. And, yeah. And because we had 24, we, he had the factory bonnet for the homologated. Uh, homologated, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. You actually only got rid so of five. I had, by I had, the way, five holes you got rid of. There's still one got big, one. One big mother hole in there. Yes. So I, I had the measurement, I had Sorry. the photos for reference to work yep. out how big a hole. Oh, there they are, there, look. It was before and after. Before and after. Yeah, that's it. Yep. So now we're, we're going to primer and then paint. Yep. Oh look, it's working. Assembly. It looks like Mr. Squiggles been at work there, but anyway. Yeah, so the bonnet's now together and it's in primer ready for some paint. So I put this one in, this is the rear window. You can see the heat shrinks up. So where yes. I've been welding and fiddling, it's obviously all played up on me. So I've had to do some shrinks in order to get it mm -hmm. to work. But I'm looking for that coop shape and everything mm. to work. And you can see there now the, the shape of the boot to that back panel because some of them are quite ugly from the yeah. factory yeah. through there. And then nice shot of the rear quarter. I think there's a few here now in a row. The quarter, the roof, obviously getting ready to go into epoxy because she, we've got she's to She's got do... nice hips, this girl, hasn't she? Yeah. So mm. we got, what I'm looking to do now is to get it all squeaky ready for that most important coat which is that first full-on yep. coat of epoxy that's going to then sit under the filler mm -hmm. so obviously the bonnet had that process yep. and i would now that's got filler in it but 90 percent of that would be gone by the time i'm finished and then this one here you can see the quarters haven't been filled yet so i've put all of the chrome molds in Again, and where the lead normally goes, there's normally a big gap there and the lead goes through. So yep. I don't really like have filler where the mould's got to no. clip on. Or well, on the rear it doesn't clip, but I, the same story with the front. So I run a bit of weld through there and get all that to fit nice. Mm. And because I've been fiddling with the bottom, I want to make sure that whole moulding fits the hole. Yes. Because when you go to put the glass too, in, as we've talked about. Too late. It's too then. late. <laughs> So there's a good one from the rear with everything yep. in its place. Um, you can see a bit of filler on the bottoms of the, that window panel. Um, and the doors are already got primer on them, so it's moving forward. Yep. So I've had this, I've talked about this many, many times mm -hmm. now. This is my process, so epoxy, um, what I call gorilla hair. So it's mm -hmm. the fiberglass uh, reinforced resin filler. Mm -hmm. Get that back down slightly below where you want it to be, re-epoxy it, and then put your body filler mm -hmm. over like that. And then I fill the whole roof, and you can see there where I filled that and I'm blocking it out, mm. where it had a set of roof racks or someone stepped on it or whatever <laughs> it is, because yeah. for whatever reason, these cars are 40 or 50 years old, so it's going to be the case. And I'm now, I've got my, my straight edge on the floor and my tapes, and I'm blocking out the whole car as one. Um, in filler and ideally as you can see on that guard there you're starting to get a fair bit of that epoxy starting mm. to show and I just thought it was interesting Dale that the nose cones bolted on mm. and I've filled up to that so I can block out through it yep so that it's all straight but I'd I'd be looking to have no more than you know a, a puff length like yeah. a little half mil yes of filler but I don't even recall doing that but I thought that's pretty clever yeah um surprise yourself sometimes so full quarters, you basically got to go everywhere. Mm. Um, and I, I do it this way, so I don't load the car up with a whole heap of spray poly. Mm. Because in a, in a normal panel shop, potentially you would do your base repairs, your filler repairs, yes. and then you'd epoxy it, and then you'd hit it with spray poly, mm. and then block all the poly out. And I've discussed it many, many times, I just don't like the result that it ends up with that way, um, rightly or wrongly. So there's the big file I normally use. Yep. And that's sort of the result. The reflection's coming out of the booth. And then that back panel. These um, B pillars had a little bit of rust in them. Mm. So obviously Mr. Ming didn't get in there. No. And we repaired those. And now, even though this is all covered up, I just can't help myself. Mm. Make it look nice, do it properly, 
So this is the rust bits, I was told, sorry, the repairs where we welded and played up. Yep. And that's it now looking pretty complete. Shot from the rear and now the doors. Um, the doors are quite unusual on these. So once again, someone ran me one day and said, how much are these doors meant to curve? And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, I've got a straight edge on it and it's like 20 mil. He said, are they damaged? The one I said, no, that's the way they work because yeah. they, they curve to go out to those big quarters. Yes. And if you put a straight edge on them, so you can't, you can't block these with no. a three foot block. No. And that's why I've got the yellow one there because you need to adjust it to have a slight mm. curve in it so that you can actually block yeah. through the curve. Because from the, the rear door handle, it's flaring out to match the rear it quarters. It comes out to match the quarter. Yeah. So you can effectively do them off the car, which is easier on the body, and then bolt it all back on um, mm -hmm. to make sure you're flowing into the quarter and all but properly. But they've certainly got some shape about them. They do. And there's, you can see it there. Yeah. Yep. I was obviously having a bit of trouble with the front of that guard because that's all been redone mm. after it's, I put the epoxy on it and go, I still don't like that. Yep. Now that bracing was on the car when we got okay. it. Then I would think that was because they'd done a bit of circuit mm. work with it. But that is a, a pretty good copy of the original 30 Bathurst okay. homologated cars. Homologated vehicles. Yep. Because they had that brace as well as the thermo fans that were basically made out of 20 mil tube. Mm. Okay. And, you know, made it the skunk works out the back and forward somewhere where yeah. they, they put those together. Well, it's a simple concept, isn't it? You know? So I got some photos of, of, off of 24 and just reshaped the bits on the towers and also they look as close as I could get them to the okay. originals. Yep. Um, so this shot now in the booth, I threw that in because this is after the last lot of epoxy, so I'm getting ready to go to primer. Mm. And I've rubbed pretty much all of that off to get it back to where I want it. Yes. So now this gets re-epoxied and then three coats of high build primer mm -hmm. and then we go through the blocking process again. And this one should have been in with the other one. So the, the, the front chrome we obviously match up as well because once again that pillar, the A pillar where it runs up, it's made out of a couple of pieces mm. and there's always a gap around the top of the mould where yep. it sort of bends around and never fits right. Um, the, the bonnet on this had the scoop the same as the 30 yep. but it was an aftermarket one and it didn't quite sit right in my eye mm. so the bits of cardboard and all i'm looking at reference photos and things trying to work out and i've got the back how i want it to sit and then i wanted the ridge down the middle like the original one or what i thought the original one looked like yep so we went to a fair bit of trouble to make that all fit really nice and across the front probably to fit better than factory and you'll see when we paint it just how nice it looks. So you can see now when we talk about the light. Yes. You look at that now and go, yeah, that's starting to look. That's right. why you go to the trouble of yeah, doing, doing doing the way you're doing it. Going the extra mile. Yeah. And all that back area. Once again, painted bumpers. We probably had a few taps over the years. Mm -hmm. So make them the best we can and a bit of filler in those. Now the fuel tank in this car. We jumped all over the place, but it's just, right. there's a million photos. Um, it was a 27 gallon. Big. Yeah, so <laughs> remember, remember the XY had like a 36 gallon? Yes. Well, these were, I think, 17 gallon mm -hmm. standard and 27. Okay. So the top of it, and you'll see in a minute. So I think Mr. Ming got to this as well, because it was, whatever was on it was like bitumen based. Right. So hence the degrees are. So we degreased it all. Worked their way through. There's a little bit of paint where someone had probably pressure packed the back edge of it at some point mm -hmm. in time. Paint stripped that and got ourselves back to an original. And, and pretty much what Ford did was it was the standard tank, but without the recess for the tyre. Right. Which made it up to 27. Yep. And it, it was available as an, an option. Okay. It was a ticker box deal. Yep. yep. Um, I want the big but tank. The, the homologated cars mm. got the big tank right. to be able to run more fuel for the race yes. So it was really good inside, had a little bit of damage on the underside. Mm. So we got the pins and pulled all those out, re-epoxied, mm. bit of filler, bit of primer, and then some satin silver to try and replicate something similar to what they were with the zinc coating on them. So um, 
They inside come up pretty, and out. Pretty spiff. Pretty smick. Mm. But there'd be a few hours in that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. To yeah get not, it, not five minutes. Yeah, to get it to that point. And I mean, <laughs> this is the whole thing. If you you go out and find new old stock parts, yeah. they're actually cheap. Then one goes, oh, how much they want for that? And you go, well, if you're doing hourly rate work, yeah. if you can get a new old stock tank like that for three grand, it's probably cheaper than fixing the old one. You try and work on $100 an hour fixing that yeah. clunker. That's what see happens. How, see how your maths goes. So the next run of photos is the diff. So yep. being a 351 car, had a factory nine inch. Mm -hmm. um, they had a tramp rod on one side for whatever reason, because the XBs had two. Okay. Um, but at some point it obviously had some, some loose um, U-bolts. U-bolts, yes. the, And so there was a fair bit of rubbing. And so we did a bit of welding and tidying up and fixing a few cracks and things to, to get that original diff back up and then put a bit of filler in it to get it up because all underneath it had the, the, mm. been slid on and off the jack a few times at the track and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Once or twice. And then I had to source some, some new parts. The under bracket that held the diff on had some lugs welded on them to tie it on the trailer and all right. those sorts of things. So we tidied all those up, yep. got all that ready for some black paint and that's the end result. Mm. So we've ended up with that nice look. Um, the rear bar... It probably was original because they would have had a rear bar on them, mm. um, but it just looked like it had probably might have been a little bit heavier, the bracketry and stuff. But we weren't chasing concourse with this one. No. And you can see there the nice brake line. So Phil was able to do his his um, nice run his little magic his bit of magic that. with yep. his stainless lines. But we still kept that feel with the the factory rubber lines and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, do your stuff, Phil. And then because. You'll see shortly we ended up with a bit more power. We went to a strange, a full strange centre. Already had billet axles. Yep. Um, when we pulled the centre out and had a look at it, it was pretty much an eBay. Had some numbers on it, and when I sort of tracked it down, it was a a, a, a poor man's strange right. centre. Mm. So we opted the to, Clayton to, strange to upgrade it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're moving into a bit of primer now. So obviously. a the filler work's done, epoxy, mm -hmm. high build primer. So this stuff now would be the first coat of primer and then, uh, sorry, epoxy, then primer. Door pillars, you can see the urethane. Yep. So we use, I use a Sika automotive sealant. Yes. And we clean that off with Prepsol and get it all nice and neat. So it does, I don't want, to, I don't want it to be built up. I don't want it to have no. a, you know, a round edge. Um, and then obviously I wasn't happy with something there. I might have trial fitted and a little mm. bit too much filler there holding the catch or whatever. And that one's out of sequence because there's no bog in the top of the mm. thing. I must have liked it because the copper in the background. Probably. Yeah. Nice shot of the gaps there. So that's, uh, I'd say that's got filler in it by the look of it. And definitely there, that's got um, that nice straight feel about it. And that reverse curve up and over the guards and under the, the doors and all is all looking nice and straight and clean. And bingo, we're in now in the primer. And then that'll come out of the booth and we're back on the, the block. Mm. Making sure the body lines are correct. And so once again, at this point, I've already got my shape. Yep. So I'm not looking to use the big long block. So I'm using what I class as a half sheet there. And I would start with 180 take the top off like the orange peel out of the mm -hmm. the primer then retrace yes go to 180 then 240 then i'm going to reprime but not as a high build just as a surfacer right then i'm going to rub it again okay. with 400 800 before we go to paint so rub 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 this is what costs a lot of money to paint a car people it's where you end up <laughs> with big shoulders <laughs> A lot of and hours. Everywhere. Block yep. it everywhere. Yeah. Like trace it everywhere, block it everywhere. And then all the things like the mirrors and stuff. I find the mirrors frustrating because you really shouldn't be putting paint stripper on them. So you've got to sand them out, get all around all no, the little they're holes. No, because they're fiberglass or a plastic? They're plastic. They're plastic, that's but right. But they're just, yeah, I, I just... Funny, funky material. It's yeah. It's weird. Um, and obviously in the booth, lots of parts hanging and mm. doors and... Always parts to paint on a car, isn't there? It's never ending. So <laughs> at this time, there would have been three of us working on this. Yep. So myself, Darren, and, and um, Damien. Yep. And interesting in the background, the gold four door. Mm. 
and the next bill and the next one the next one so that's um boss xc sitting under it and somewhere along the line actually by now i think 400 is probably gone yes yeah because you didn't have room otherwise no we would be running out um i don't know who that is in the background so what we're looking at now is Obviously, I'm painting the others, the back of the bumpers, mm -hmm. um, primer, I would think, getting re ready for some paint and all those sort of ancillaries. And this is that process, you know, the, while yep. the shell's in the booth, the other's got to come out yep. and, and backwards and forwards. Stone guard on the inside, the guards. Um, and by the look of that, and I didn't, must have been under the pump at this stage, not as many photos as I would like mm. to have had, but... I'm looking at that thinking the stone guard's done underneath. I've got it back masked now to do the white yep. in the engine bay. And then this next run now is, is the white on all the insides and the bumpers inside the car. And you can see that one of the inside where the boot's not done because the mm -hmm. boot in these is black. Right. So it's just a waste of product. And, mm. and it, it's right. funny though, you know, if you build, if you put if you painted it white, you yep. put three coats of white on, you then got to rub it again before you can paint it black. Mm. And DG's, like direct gloss is harder to rub than yes. epoxy or primer. Mm. So I would have rubbed the epoxy and then use wet on wet primer mm. and then straight on with the black. It's Make, easier to rub. Makes more sense. But when you look at, say, the, the, the boot floor with the mm. spot welds and all, if you've got all those layers, it starts to look really fat. Right. And that's what I always talk about. I don't like that fat look. Mm. So I'm... I want to limit, I want enough paint that it seals it, but I don't want to load it up yeah. over and over and over. So now we're doing the outsides, Ooh, the shell, lovely. and now they all got to get rubbed again. <laughs> so it's always rubbing. So that I've done the white indirect gloss. Yep. Right. So DG as they call it. So there's no clear with that. It's just the color. So then you rub all that down um, with 800. Mm -hmm and get it all ready to mask up for stripes. Yep. Now the difference with this car was, we talked about the last one with the little 3M 12 mil blue line. Yes. I spoke to the owner because we were resto modding it anyhow about doing all of the paint under the clear. Right. So the, the little blue line was painted as well as the dark blue line. Right. Now that created, the biggest issue was there's no room to fudge no. So it had to be right. All the panels had to be gapped correctly and yep. then masked correctly mm. before you pulled it apart to do the colour. Because it was painted on, not adjusted not, with the tape. Not adjusted yeah. with the tape. Mm. And I did all of that because I, I was pretty hungry at that time to, to do the paint job on this because it was going to summer nights right. to have a go at paint. Mm. Like custom, I think it probably would have went in custom paint because it's stripes and it's under yes. the clear and all that sort of stuff. So I'll talk about that a bit later. So... The plan with the whole deal is you've got to then get all of the um, the logos and all that cut in reverse mm. so you can paint them. So instead of having a sticker, you actually have the outline so yes. you can paint the sticker. Um, look at that one. We've got Simmons, Simmons. I think there's a theme. Yeah. There was a special on. Yeah. So you'll see, oh, there's the back shot as well. How cool is that? <laughs> so it's all blocked out. So then I've, I've marked where the stripes have got to go. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly whether I just marked them with a pencil or whether I actually put a bit of tape on. I've taken them off so I can't get the blue on the back. So you've got to back mask everything. Wow. Mask off where the, the blue, the, the light blue is going to go. Yes. Paint the light blue. Then mask it again, <laughs> so 12 you, mil so for the dark blue. The dark blue, yes. Then pull it all off and clear it. Okay. And don't leave anything on the white. No. A little bit that of would, that would spoil it. Any, a little bit of anything that ends up on the white. So yeah. clean, clean, clean. So that's all done in base coat. Yes. And then cleared over. Okay. Whereas when I did 400, I used direct gloss on the dark mm -hmm. blue. Remember I said? And then I rubbed it. No yes. trouble with the blue. So this this one is rub the white, back mask, use the base coat. Right. Which is no rubbing. You know, you've got 24 hours to be able to then clear over it. So then you clear over it, and then you do that on the whole car. So we do the bonnet, and then Did you need to make sure the scoop's going to match the bonnet because there's no room for error. Did you sleep at all during these few no, days of painting? No, <laughs> probably not. 
Um, so yeah, so we've got um, all of that done now. So that, like I say, it's like with the scoop, I've painted the whole thing light blue. That way you don't get a variation in the build. So I'm only looking for 12 mil of the light blue. Mm. But I'll put that on, so then when I do the dark blue, it's already got a half a coat. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. And now we do the dark blue. And remembering there's not one panel that doesn't have blue on it. That's it right. It doesn't have a stripe. Like that, see? Yes. So, then, so <laughs> now that's cleared. Yep. Um, and because I'm going to cut and buff this, mm -hmm. by memory I'll put like four solid coats of clear on it. Yeah. And if it had, like I'm where the lines are, I put a coat on, then I'd run up and down the lines with a coat. Yep. And then come back and then lay it over the whole lot again, just so you've got enough build where the step is. So you've got something to work with. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's a nice photo of the base coat. Mm. So at this point, you know, your back mask, if you've got a little bit of a bleed under the tape, you've got to get down with the blade oh. and trim it and mess about and sand it and and then bam. So that's off off the gun. Yep. Sparkly. And then this this is afterwards out of the booth, mm. sitting on there. And looking at it, I'm thinking the fact that it's taped up still, it's not polished yet. No. So I must have had a good day on the gun, if that's the case. Yep. Because if that was polished, all of that blue in the, in the opening in there the where the tape is yeah. would be all horrible. So that's the bonnet and all. To do the snake. Yes. The cobra. The cobra. <laughs> And the lines, you've got to do your fine line all the way around for your... And they're, 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 that's the worst job, around that wheel arch. Yeah, okay. So you, you, you do all of that, and then I've now got to make sure I've got everything taped off so that I can do the dark blue and the light blue mm. all in sequence. So I would have got that cobra all ready yep. for the dark blue and then taped over it while I do the light blue, yes. then unmask it and then do it. And what I hadn't thought about when I decided to do this is all the little white bits in that um, in, this cobra. in the cobra. Yeah. Every one of those white dots is a little bit of tape. Okay. All right. So when I've put it on and I've painted it, yeah, I've got to sit down with a scalpel and pick out every little one of those. He's a patient man, viewers. Right. He's a patient man. <laughs> and then load it up with clear. Yeah. Because you've got to get the clear to sit in there because I want it dead flat yes. afterwards. So yep. so when you look at it, you go, how do you do that? Yeah. Right? Just me doing my thing, mm. you know. So, Howard being Howard, yes. That's obviously after I've polished it because it looks pretty cool. But the clear's that thick. Actually, <laughs> use a razor blade and drag the razor blade across all those lumps and stuff where it's sitting on there. To flatten it. Yeah. Get so the excess off. You the... can buy like a little block. I'm trying to think what they call it. Um, that is made for doing runs and stuff right, that okay. the panel shops use. Or if yep. you've got a little bit of, like a D-nib, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. of rubbish in the paint, the clear, it sits up and they have these little blocks that they drag across. Well, I was always taught with a razor blade. And I'm surprised there, because the panel's curved, I probably haven't worried about it. I normally tape the edges of the blade. I'll do a, I'll, I'll do a little program on this mm. one day. Mm. Once we get the build series finished, we'll have nothing to talk about. We'll have to find <laughs> something to do. So you can actually drag the blade across it, yeah. and this is like two days after it's painted. Yep. And then once you've done that, you then block it with 800 and work your way back up through the case. Mm. So the boot lid here, I've just I've got a, a series of photos now with the Cobra logo there to show you because I had the photos. So that's it. Um, so you can imagine you've got the Cobra. Yep. So you paint that. Then you put the masking over the top of that. Mm to be able to do the light blue. Yes. So you do, it would have been all the light blue mm -hmm. and then mask again to do the dark blue. Yes. And then pull that off and then clear it. Yep. Lots of clear. So Lots you can see clear. how Excess I've got, clear. got around on the yep. angle to get, you can see how much clear is on yep. it. Then drag the blade over it and then block it out mm. and polish it. And, and, that's it, how you and it looked super. That's all it they really, really did. The I, king of bling. Yeah, it looked really good. Yeah. It was worth the effort. Yeah. And you can see the fluoros across the lines. A lot of people will, will do this and put the clear over it, but either don't, aren't prepared to try and block it back because it's mm. right and they're going to rub through or whatever. Yes. But it's not that often you see a car with stripes where you can't see... Any build-up lines, And anything. probably, yep. I haven't seen this car since, you know, for a few years. There's a half chance 
now there might be a little bit of vision that you can see it because where the dark blue is it's three coats of um, base coat yep. less of clear than where the white is right so when it dries and shrinks yes because it does shrink like everything when it dries out um, so the whole car then gets blocked 800 1200 15 you know 2000 more, more 3, rubbing, rubbing. <laughs> and buff it out but I was pretty stoked that day that I took this photo. That was the boot lid off the gun with the clear. Oh, and I went... I thought that was the mirror out of the bathroom. I've got, I've, got I've got to put that in. Yeah. At the Dave's palm trees in the yeah, reflection. Lovely. So this is after that process, that polishing process. Um, I don't recall whether I did... Yeah, actually I do recall because I've seen one of the photos. I painted the black after I did all of that. So I spoke before about, so I've now back masked where the black's going to go. Mm -hmm. And then I would have rubbed all that down, ready to take the black. So you need um, the dash, the boot, radiator support, and then that's your unmask. On the side of the roof. Yeah, yeah. yeah inside that, the car, stuff, yeah, all yeah. those things. Yeah. And as you can see, the roof's all painted and striped and polished. Yep. So now it's ready for assembly. Mm. It sounds so simple. Hmm. <laughs> Now the fun begins. So now the fun begins. Yeah. So it's back on the hoist and it's already got a couple of bits going in. So I've tried to put the photos together in a way that there's a bit of flow, but mm. it will move around It'll a jump bit. Jump around a little. So this is an aircon car, mm. but when we got it, there was no compressor on it. And okay. um, the owner wanted to have um, a rotary compressor rather than a piston style, so the round one. Right. And I, and he, I said, what? Why don't you run the square one? It'll look more factory. He goes, oh no, they drag power. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. When okay. you see what power went in it, you, it really wouldn't have made any difference. But anyway, he liked that look. I'm, I'm more a square compressor sort of guy because yep. that's what they were. So all of this stuff gets pulled apart, painted, you know, coated if it's got to be coated. We pressure test um, the cores to make sure yep. we don't have a problem later on, and then redo all of the the vacuum lines, and then. These are quite unique um, to this particular model. Or it was made by, or someone made it for Ford. Yep. And you can buy aftermarket ones that are similar, but you can't get these. And when I went to get the, pick the car up, I said, have you got all the original aircon stuff? Because I was looking for this. And he goes, oh, it's out the back of the shed, I think. So I've gone out the back, and this is leaning up against the shed out the back. Mm. And obviously been kicked around a bit, like that. <laughs> Just to say, we went about restoring it mm. because I, I'm a real stickler for, I reckon it makes the, a big difference if it's the right one and it, yes. and it looks right. And I mean, it was a massive amount of hours, but you can actually buy a comb that's made for combing radiator cores. Okay. Um, I think we did, I got one off of the, the radiator guy, I think in the end. So with a little bit of time and effort, you can straighten all those up and then you end up with that. Provided you pressure tested it and yes. make sure it hasn't got any yeah, leaks. Yeah, check that first, please. So that's just one of those things that you know I like to do. Yeah. And it was electric window car, and these electric window motors have got some little round nylon bits that go between that effectively make up like the gear drive, and it right. it, it must be like if it overloads, it snaps them. Yeah. Yeah. Like so more often than not, they're yeah. worn out or the yeah, good word. Mm. Uh, you like that? Sacrificial. I've looked it up in the dictionary. <laughs> so. They're always gone, so we, we yeah. pull them apart, clean them up, um, and that's one of them. It's one of them can pull right down it's a and clean it up. Fifty-year-old car, how it almost fifty-year-old car. So yep, and the same with these fellas. You know, we get them re-zinked and obviously check them, make sure they're going to work. Yep, you can see the magnets and that are being pulled out of the, the cover. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever do one of these, do yourself a favour and make sure that you either take the bearing out the bottom of the cover. Or you, when you get it back from the plater, it'll be all full of acid and stuff. Mm. And what happens is the shaft, see the little bit on the end of the armature? Armature. Yeah. It ends up rusting in that bearing ah. and they seize. It's a trap for young So players. it'll come back, you put yep. it all together. You've done all the hard work you thought. Right, check it, mm. it all works, put it in the car. 12 months later, when you finally finish the car yep. and you turn the wipers on, it goes, eh. <laughs> I've done it. That's all I know. You know. That's how Learn I know. from experience. Exactly right. Um, brakes, so you can see the boosters, something's been leaking there, the master cylinder's been having a leak or whatever, so we rebuilt the master, I believe. Um, I always send the booster off, yep. get it redone, 
and then start pulling brakes apart by the kits. Uh, what's that front one? Rear one? Rear one? Single and then he, mm. notice he's not quite as neat now. Remember the last last yeah, car and it was yeah. all laid out. He's a bit bit jaded at this I stage. Said, I, no, I said to him, like, you can't spend all that time. Mate. It's all right <laughs> on your car. So um, there, the rear's all finished. And once again, you've got to remember that these are going to the owner, mm. you know. So you put the end of the week or the end of the month, whatever you're billing him, and you, you put it in and go, you know, brake kit, that, 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 and you've got a photo with it, it's a little bit easier to justify what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. And then that's the finished result. So the cast iron is painted in the HT cast, new mm. cast, and then all of the, the zinc plating's done in A-class metal finishes in Adelaide at Lonsdale. It's better than new. And... If you have a look at the U-bolt style, it looks mm -hmm. like it's been taken with a fisheye lens. Mm -hmm. See how they look curved? Yep. That's how they were factory because the bracket for the tramp rod yes. sits on top of the diff, but the holes in the plate on the bottom are the width of the diff. Yes. So rather than Ford making new plates, they made a U-bolt that's actually wider at the top and narrow. So it's like a bow shackle. It goes mm. through the bottom. Okay. And you buy them from the GT shop. There you go. So... You look at it and go, U-bolt's bent. <laughs> no, that's the way they were. That's the way they were. And then uh, the leaf, the amount of leaf springs, yep. between the bit that goes over the spring with the rubbers in it, mm -hmm. there's a little plate that goes between the two. Okay. When it was all made for a five leaf. When they went to a six leaf, it was too big. Mm. So they made little plates to go between the two. To the width of the leaf spring. So the little plates that go in there, the right. reason they're there is is because the yeah, actual the, the U-bolt plates right. yeah. were made for five leaf when they went to a six, so you put a little plate in. See? How do you learn these things here? Everything's got a reason. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it a long time. Fair call. Cool. So Damien's got real good on the bolts, so mm -hmm. away we go again. So acid, Y wheel, bag them up. Send them off, get them plated. And this is done very early in the piece, people. This not, is all being not done. Not when you're assembling. <laughs> this is all being done as they come on off the car. Mm. They all go in their box and then get processed yep. so that all of this is away getting done while we're in the doing everything else. Yep. So the, the bit of black stuff there goes on the tank over the top of the pollution control. Yep. Um, you know, shackles, all, all the bits are all getting processed yep. and cleaned up. And then them little white rubbers there they're a, a real pain they actually on boss xc we put an xa set up in it right because they're all brass bushed right and because we'd modified it all and they knew if it wasn't 100 percent aligned these little plastic ones would pop off right. the xc ones so you can buy them but they glue together and it's it's not mm. it's not a lot of fun no now through this in because if you go to rezinc your boot latch you have to bend the tabs back, pull it apart, because there's one little aluminium part in there. Yes. See where the lock goes in? There's a silver yep. bit. If you send it off the platers to get zinc plated, mm. when they acid dip it, it eats that away. Yes. You've got to pull it, it apart anyway. When it comes back, anyway. yeah. it'll always play up because that little gadget has lost some of its size. Mm. So we pull them apart, take that bit out, send it off, get it plated either zinc or in, chrome. In its component form. Bring it back. And don't plate the springs because they're spring steel. Yes. Bring it back, put it back together. Jobs all are good. good. See? Just one of those things. When I build my Ford one day, I'll know how to do that now. Yeah? HK is probably the same, mate. <laughs> Door handles. Um, got some factory black ones. Yep. Stripped them. We would have put them in our little sandblaster with some mm -hmm. probably some glass bead. Yep. Um, and then they go through the CF black epoxy base coat. Yep. Um, with the satin clear and then this thing had some really nice checker plate pedals yep so we give all that the turf rebuild it all the bushes are all available you know reassembled with white grease all painted in the satin black boosters come back from the repair shop yep all nicely done i've never tried to pull one of them apart I've just gone, you know, sometimes There's you've got to work out your some limit. Some people are experts on their fields on their and field. you're not in brake boosters. And brakes are brake. No, <laughs> brakes are brakes. I don't, I don't want to play with the brakes. Um, seat belts, we've mm -hmm. had this discussion before as yep. well and, and I'm just sort of covering it. Um, I'm doing the van ones at the moment, so um, we'll do something on that shortly. 
we basically disassemble the original belt, mm. find enough parts with all the bits and pieces we've got laying around, get some stuff zinc plated, some plates um, CAD plated. Yep. I mentioned this in the last episode, and um, some a nice guy contacted me from Western Australia and said, seatbelt solutions that we use to do the belts have found someone now that will actually put the pl they re-chrome the clip part right. and then they re-plastic it. Oh, yeah, because that's so the hard part. That's isn't the it? one that's hard to find. The plastic bit. So seatbelt solutions in Western Australia. I've, I've been meaning to ring them and have a chat to them to see what they're up to. But yeah, so that is a real been a real problem child for everybody. So that's them all pulled apart. We've chrome plated, zinc plated, mm -hmm. done all the things we need to do to send it off to them. And then this this is the stalk. Yes. And that's as far apart as you can take it because that plastic bit on the left gets put on afterwards. Mm. Like it's put on, sorry, and then they crimp the end on it. Yes. So we normally pull it all apart like that, clean up the zinc. You can buy the sticker where it says press with the Ford logo mm -hmm. and get the best spring out of whichever one to make the best stalk we can make. And then the rubber bit on it is like a, it's probably about two and a half mil thick. Okay. And if you can find one of those between all the bits, we've zinced, we've actually zinced them ourselves in our little zinc plater out the back, mm -hmm. but it's difficult. Yeah. It's, it's not, not the easiest thing to do. You might get one good one, put it in a driver's side because you're not going to have a passenger <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So the, um, that's them when they come back. Yep. So they're all, um, all nice and ready to go. So as you said, Dale, you can't <laughs> leave everything to the end because nope. these are all bumper bar parts. Um, by the look of it. So boot hinges, oh there's a bit of inner guard, bumper bar brackets, bit of everything. bumpers. So obviously I've sent the bumpers out and got them blasted. So, yep. so on a customer car, that's the most cost effective way of doing it. Mm. For us to try and paint strip the bars and all, they're as thick as, so I just send yeah. them out, get them blasted, weld up any holes if they've had a few extra holes put in them or whatever yep. for trailer plugs and all that sort of stuff. And then epoxy, look at that, it's magic. Mm. Um, Very clever. And then they all get bogged, rubbed, cleaned. And then these bits here, it looks like a lot of engine parts. Yeah. And then I'm suited up there, so I'm potentially going to some black. A so I'm a bit, I'm a, I must admit it must have been feeling good though. That might, that'd have to be epoxy because yeah. there's no water on the floor. No. And I must have been going to give them a quick scuff up because otherwise the floor would be wet because I don't want any rubbish in it. And then this is just that process that you've been involved in with me. Mm -hmm. Every component. Yep. Rub it out, fix all the little bits and pieces. Yeah, headlight buckets and... Paint it black. Shock mounts and you name it. Yeah. Now, I've got a little run of photos here of parts. <laughs> and I, I must admit, I, I hear a lot of flack about rare spares. And there are some bits that don't fit real good. But without them, how do you restore a car yeah, like good, this? Good luck. Because look at that. So that's all of the bits and pieces that we needed on this car mm. that you can't get anywhere else. So as far as I'm concerned, these guys do a good job. Yep. Sometimes they could do a bit better. But Couldn't we all? In the main, mm. they're all the bits that I've used on this car. Um, and I mean, there, there are other options at times. Mm. But I find in the main that something like that tail light lens i can assure you there's not three different people making a lens someone somewhere is making it and all of these people are buying it and putting it in their packaging hmm. because there's not enough margin in it and then not enough demand too for, for people for, that. for people to tool up yeah to make all those bits. for sure so this is all the stuff now that we've cleaned sent off had plated and come back to this specific yep. car and you would have seen photos of the workshop with the couple of red toolboxes. Mm. We have one toolbox that's for the car we're doing, mm. and the other one's our spares department. Yep. Howard's drawers, basically. Mm. Don't mm. go near them unless yeah, you ask me. For danger. So Very danger. These here, as the parts come back from the platers, or yep. as we buy them, like the rare spares parts, if we're using rares, or the GT shop, or I mean, I deal with a lot of different people to get all that, you know, the Grand Tourer. So yep. many people. And some of those people are making one thing and not the other. Yes. And I see there the, the striker on the bottom corner there. I actually put stainless steel ones in Boss okay. XC that work really, really well yep. off eBay. And I'll probably put a set in the van because they work good, nice and shiny, mm. good, good bit of bling. 
And then there's all those parts, the bottom drawer. Nice you, thong. You have Chinese safety boots <laughs> on the bottom. And then all that zinc, so the inner door, you know, mechanism, braces, and yep. yeah. And then plastics, door mm. handles. Yeah, there's a good the run of photos. We, I spoke last time mm. about doing the door handles on these. Yep. And there's a good run of photos on this one. Um, so those rubbers there, so the, the, the one across the tops for the window, mm -hmm. and the other two are the pinch weld that runs across the top of the door. Yes. And the factory pinch weld on XC Coupes is unique. Hard tops. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hard top coupe. <laughs> there, it's unique in the sense of the shape. Yeah. And fortunately, this had a couple of good ones on mm. them. Um, if you've got to replace it, it, to me, it's a real obvious, oh, they didn't yeah. have good ones of those. Yep. So it was nice to have those. And one of those progressions with this car, once we'd started it, mm. was the owner decided he wanted to go RS rack and pinion front end in it with the McPherson strut. Yep. Which I don't have a problem with with a car like this because it bolts in. You're not mm. welding nothing. No, you've right. only got to drill four little holes and cut the end off your steering column. Yep. Which is all repairable, um, yeah. you know, with another column or whatever. So he opted to go that way. So we put that in it, and this is the column out of the car. So it had an, an old school, um, like a Euro E style Momo on it. Yep. So we stripped the column down, and then we did redo the bushes. And this is a good example of um, Darren at his best. Mm. So a lot of people wouldn't realise that you can actually sand back all the scratches and all in those black plastics and repolish it mm. if you know what you're doing if you know what you're doing um so obviously i repaint all the, the shaft and all and then we clean up the switches and make sure everything works make sure we've got a, a decent lock and but the, they're polished the plastics for that. not it's painted polished plastics. it's polished yeah, plastic exactly. yeah yeah so remember the little fiat yes. and he did the mirror well that's what we did there with that yep. one so that's all the original plastics polished and then you end up with what looks like a nice new column mm does um the gauges we just polished the glasses and probably retouched up the the um the fluoro -y bits on it yep there are people out there that do this now that pull them all apart and you know clean all the plastics and put new buddy stuff on yep. it but it was all working so we yeah. weren't concerned about it i think we ended up having to have to track some of these down and these are really hard to find now so they run from the the dash crash pad up to the roof right on the A pillar, a -pillar yep. but they're um, shorter than the sedan ones. Right. So they're specific to a hard top. Hard top or a coupe. <laughs> and getting harder and harder to yep. find because they crack where the screw holes mm. are. So, you know, we needed a good set of those. Um, the kick plates and then the same process again, you know, pull all the vents apart and clean mm. them and re zinc them. And I put that one in because see that? glue off or glue rid glue rid. diggers glue rid yep bunnings good old bunnings where they glue the stuff on at the factory and it's got the um contact adhesive yes that horrible and it goes really 40 years old <laughs> this stuff's designed to take the glue off the floor when you pull up your vinyl flooring right and it works straight hmm. Hmm. really good so that's how it's tipped for the yeah. video yeah mm. So all of those parts now are starting to come together. So we've got the grill. Um, I think the grill on this one was pretty good. 400, we polished the original grill. Yes. This one I painted the grill. Right. Um, because it, you know, it's that concourse versus mm. resto mod. And then we, um, new H4s, new lenses, repo. Painted all the buckets. Polished, yeah, yeah, polished, yeah, polished all of the, yep. the moulding wasn't damaged, which was good because yep. they're hard, a bit of a yep. pain to get off. So that was all cleaned up. We've got the console sitting there as well. And now all of the pollution control for the boot, the carbon canister. So it's a clean. Hmm. And these ones here, these are little buckets off the back of the, the side yeah. indicators. Yes. So inside the front guard, which are sort of visible, and mm -hmm. then in the boot, they're very visible. Being an XC, the boots were painted black. Black, correct. After they were assembled. Oh. So they looked like that. <laughs> you mean like After crap. we cleaned it. Like yeah. crap. <laughs> yeah, so that's where it had half come off. So yeah. we cleaned all those up, and I know it may be me, I probably would have put them back on and didn't paint them black. Seat runners, we always pull all those apart. Mm. 
You can buy repay ones and they're not bad. We've mm. used them. Um, I like to use original if I can get them. And they have little plastic sliders in them yes. that they slide on. But once they're pulled apart and cleaned up, normally all of that goes back together okay. Might need a little bit of weld and a few new bolts and things, but they go together pretty good. And this particular car, when it comes to the radio, um, they were an AM only because it mm. was a Falcon 500. And what I did there was I found a guy, and I should find his number, I guess, but I can't remember where it was. And he was an old school radio repairer. Right. And he builds a Bluetooth into it. Oh, there you go. So, um, old school meets new. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Might have I seen the other day where there's someone promoting the Bluetooth. I think we might have been a iPhone plug. Right. But anyhow, you could plug your phone into it and play yep. your music off your phone Beautiful. through the original, and it, they, they increase the amplification and stuff. Provided just running a standard style speaker, because yeah. the owner wasn't concerned about having you know a big because when, when it came with the big doof doof in mm. it, I said, "Is that you?" He go, "No, that was in it." I go, "Right, yeah. I said we'll just put something nice in you yeah. and listen to your engine." That's exactly right. So then we redid um, all of the fans and stuff. Yep. Now I learned something like that. It was this car or the one before. Mm -hmm. So we always talk about the clutch fan and all that sort of stuff. Yep. You know they got a big spring on them? Yes. You know what that does? No. In enlighten me how it please. It gets hot. Right. And when it gets hot, when the car gets hot, the ah, spring gets hot. So that's what expands. Causes the fan. And tightens it up and makes the work. fan run faster. Mm. That's my understanding. There you go. That if, makes if sense. If it's not right. Yeah. Someone will correct they, us. I've got to correct myself. <laughs> The last video, yes. I said the first 100 Cobras were 351s. Oh. It was the first 200. Oh. So I got pulled up a couple of times oh, on that, good, and I, I must admit I should have done my homework no, better. No, Howard, you're just testing your audience. That's should, all it is. Yeah, get a so few more comments. Attention. A few more comments. So we original fan back on it, yep. and then we had to get all that air con. So we needed a TX valve. Mm. I had a few bits laying around. And a little sneaky view there of the racing rocket cover mm. lets you know that there was something going to happen there as well. A little bit of something going on in there. And because of that, we needed more fuel. So Bigger line. There are fuel fillers available and all of that, but mm -hmm. we've got a 27-gallon tank and needed the the right sender for the yep. tank. And yep. So, so everything we, worked. we made one. Um, mm -hmm. And there was another reason for that because you can buy them, um, and someone makes like a really like a half inch one okay. that goes in the standard size. Um, and the engine now is running a sniper injection, right? Electronic, so we need an electric fuel pump. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mounted there, discreetly so, tucked on the rail. Yeah, so Phil doing his job, and and you know this thing was going to get used. So we. I said to Phil, I don't want a whole lot of braid and stuff. The, mm. the sniper comes with all the hose to run it. Yep. Just so run, run it. Yeah. And then a fuel filter. Yep. And then we just open up the holes through the seat rails there to get, because we need supply and return. Okay. And then we're still running the carbon canister. So mm. from, an, from a, if you ever got pulled over from an engineering point of view, it's still got ADR27 yep. potentially hooked up. Mm. So that's some of those sort of bits and pieces. And like I said, I'm going to try and keep this stuff together so it flows a bit. So we always talk about these spoilers on these things. Mm. And I spoke last time Probably. about the rear spoiler yep. had these steel brackets. So you can see there now, this is, I don't know whether the number three would have been from Ford or whether it come off at some stage and someone wrote on it, but always interesting to see some of the things mm. that you find. The little things underneath. So... What they did was they put a bit of mild steel with a bolt in it and then it went through the panel yeah and of course they rusted and then start reacting on the fiberglass and pushing things around so we've cut all of those out and then made up a, a copy out of stainless mm -hmm. and then tig welded some stainless bolts in so that we could re recreate what they had and then got it back on the car set it all up i can't remember exactly how we work to get them in the right position now but we did all of that um you know probably a bit of hit and miss and double-sided tape and things mm. to get to a point where we could make it fit and then we fiberglass those in so i was trying to look at this on the the bigger screen i reckon i've 
put a dab of urethane on those and got them in place. Yes. And then I've glassed them in. You can see the mesh and stuff there, the, the matting to fiberglass all them in properly. And then the, it had a front spoiler on it that was badly damaged, but it, the owner liked that look. So this yep. is like the 30 homologated front yes. spoiler, so yeah, the glass one. different to the other ones, yep. Um, why we had that and now we're back to the rear, I'm not sure. So now I'm getting my gaps right, mm. both sides, repairing the front spoiler, and back on the rear one again. So obviously now the car's together, and I would think this is just a Howard moment, mm. and you've worked with me. Sometimes it's, you know that spoiler? Yeah, yeah. I'll get to it. Yeah, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. So the spoiler's probably got left. So now I've got everything taped up, doing the final work on it. Knowing what these cars are like, that would have been giving you all sorts of grief and go, I just need to get I'll in the right later. head space. I'll do it later. And then I'll do it. So yep. obviously that and the front nose cones and then the front spoiler back on now. And I spoke about that previously, that I like to do those after the car's assembled mm. to get the fit nice. Yep. Because it is difficult when it's, the car's in bits and pieces. Yep. Um, and you'll see when we go to paint how they all turn out. So the photo now, we're onto the dash. So obviously we had a complete car. Mm. It had some, some bugbears, all that extra wiring and all, and people have <laughs> been in there cutting around the, the loom. So we, yeah. we pulled all of the, the loom out and disassembled and Isn't that a fun job? checked, cleaned, <laughs> fixed all the earths. Yeah. Um, most of the earths on these are just crimped. Yeah. So I normally like to solder all those. Yeah. re -tape. And then get it back yeah. in the car. And with this particular car, um, Luke Domain yes. was involved and his involvement was primarily to get the sniper wide because it runs mm. through a fuel pump regulator and all those sort of things yep. with electric pump. Okay. And what I had him do is we actually put two new regulators, uh, two new relays near the battery, which we'll see in a minute. But I got a couple of those old original covers and had them ah. redone and put them on top of the relays so that so they looked like original. Factory look, yep. And you can see now that bracing and all that I've painted and you know you start getting the gold zinc and all with it. And then Luke comes along and makes a mess. Yeah. So we need to wire up. Um, so we now run an electronic dizzy mm. fuel injection um, and we run a fixed fan on this one so we didn't have to worry about that. Fuel pumps and basically get rid of all of those old fusible links and stuff yep. to, to make it function. And that's Luke there. So and and everyone says to me, he was smiling. Must yeah, everyone says to me, why, why don't you put the guards on? That's why. Exactly why. Because everybody's got to work in that bay and, yeah. and it's about, I don't know, an hour and a half to put the guard on. And they're, they're a big ass guard as well. Yeah. So. so I like to get all of that stuff and the car running and all before I put all of the panels mm. on it. So that's the bit I was talking about. So that it's yep. got the battery tray and he's made new leads, but the, the relay's there. Mm. It's all now mounted and it's the, the relay's for all the sniper and all that sort yep. of stuff, but it still looks factory-ish. Yes. Yeah, that was the plan. Um, door handles. Mm. Troubles. Or armrests, arm I guess is the terminology, yeah. with yeah. the really big switches for the electric mm. windows. They deteriorate mm. and they bend yes and they don't have a lot of structure in them so what we do is pull all of that deteriorated crud yep fun <laughs> from inside <laughs> and then make up a bit of a jig and clamp it all up so that we can get it straight yep and then you can see at the front there a bit of cardboard to make sure that there's room for things to fit where it's meant to fit mm. and then we use a two-part resin and there's, we've used a couple of different ones. You know, they're normally like a polymer. Yep. If you've ever seen um, where they join a whole heap of wires and they put the plastic cover over it and fill it up with goo so mm. if it's in the water, it doesn't yeah. get, you know, a bit like yep. Telstra and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that yeah. type of product. Yep. Because it's, it's still soft. It's quite heavy, but it's yeah. still soft. So we pour all that in, let it set, and then you end up like this and you slowly work your way along and then right at the, the right-hand side there, you then got to clamp that down again and then fill it again so it all holds it together. Right. So ideally, 
they end up where it's back to back there, matchy, you matchy. can see that yeah. they actually start to look straight because they've normally got a big banana in them. Yeah, they both like, yeah. Now, where it's really thin around the switch there, that's you're almost relying on the switch to hold it because mm. there's no strength in it at no. all. So you can see there, this is obviously off of Damien's because it's a different colour. Yes. Either that or I've used something different on the top. Maybe I've just used a different resin on the top. So you can see that's got the switches in it now. Yep. And there's a little, we've put a little bit of timber in there to hold it. Might have even left it in there. And when you see the final fan, you know, the, the idea is to get to a point that when you're at the end, it all looks nice mm. and it's straight and it's functional and you can still use and it. And it's most point. unusual because they're so hard to they're get hard right. They're hard to get right. Yep. Someone will end up making them, I guess. Yep. And, then, and the rears don't have the prop. Well, the rears don't, normally bolt back on they have a little gap mm. so we pick it out of there as well and, and bend yep. the, the steel in um had a really good crash pad on it so we didn't have to do much with that but the actual fascia itself was cracked yes now i don't reckon i had it at this point so i bought the little wiggly wire now that yep. reinforces it when you mm -hmm. weld them so we normally just plastic weld with a i got a little hot air one but also mainly use a soldering iron and you can see there where Darren's putting some bits in there with the solder and iron and then they all get... To me, welding is like any welding. You've got two bits of something and you're going yep. to melt both of them. Melt them. And, and use a bit of filler rod filler or whatever. And build it up. and Build it up, grind it out. And join it together. And pray. Mm. <laughs> it stays together. There's a lot of that goes on. So, under the dash, starting to... It um, looks better than that red uh, oxide, yeah, that, that, was oxide that was on there before. Yeah, that was on there. So we're starting to get all the bits in there, the heater box and the vents. Um, Fascia's on now. We've got that centre back with the clock, the radio. Not some dodgy looking gauges all in there. It's starting to look yep. honky dory. And then the owner wanted to have a nice momo on it, which I'm going to run something similar to that on mine, I think. I like that look. It's always, um, I always had that style of steering wheel on my, on my yep. van. Standard console. The five speed, the Tremec comes up really nicely through yep. there. Um, engine. Hmm. So this is what we pulled out and it had a top loader behind it, hmm. which was all getting pretty tired. So this is what we end up putting <laughs> in it. So the owner said to me, I want a brand new Little crate upgrade. engine. Okay. Went, yeah, fair enough. So don't know where you're going to buy one because they don't make one. So you can buy a crate Windsor Right. Buy a crate big block. Mm -hmm. Can't buy a Cleveland. Mm. He said, well, I'd really like a new engine. So I rang up Sam when Sam was up at West End yep. and um, said, mate, I want a brand new Cleveland. Yes. Don't we all? Good luck with that. <laughs> I said, no, no, I want you to build me one out of aftermarket yeah. parts. I'm not going to supply you anything. It's got to be all new. So we worked out a price. So yep. the arrow block and then you know aftermarket heads, scat crank, blah blah blah. So it ended up being a 427. Okay. Three V heads and the manifold is um, comes from the three V guys. So it's it's like a looks like a factory style, yep. more, more factory style. You know, mm -hmm. brand new water pump, all billet accessories and stuff. Mm. And then I got him to put a nice uh, millet and sump on it. So I didn't I didn't want the sort of splayed looking yes. thing on it. Yep and um, wasn't cheap mm. and then he built it and tuned it and we ended up with this <laughs> so you gotta love that ain't you Dale? so you see the torque on that yes on the amazing so 575 horsepower. Mm. So hence the re the need to upgrade the diff most, center. Most things, yes. And the gearbox. So we ended up, I got back onto Mal Wood. So Mal's done a few kits for me over yep. the years. So a, a, a Tremec TKO 600. Okay. Um, so I had a 500 in the, um, in the, Mustang. the Mustang. The mm -hmm. 600, 600 foot pound of torque rather than 500. Um, and they've got multiple locations where the shifter bolts on so you know he supplies it where, okay. where it comes straight up through the console yep. and they're really which is there you can see the photo with it mm -hmm. coming through the the opening and no need to modify the floor um and then we just run a hearse lever on it yep with the the knob 
and it's it's a nice look and it there'll be a photo up later um, it runs a hydraulic truss bearing as well okay yep. so I put the photo in to remind me, so we put the strain centre in it, it had mm -hmm. the billet axles, um, had the 351 tail shaft, yep. we just made sure we put good unis in it, and then we ran a uh, extreme streetable clutch, like a multi-finger clutch. Right. So the RRS, so we're starting to get into assembly now, mm -hmm. so we've got the RRS front end, rack and pinion, some nice drill rotors, um, upgraded brakes, and then we went into um, some car builders, just trying to quieten it down a little bit and the owner wanted a black hood lining because they had a cream hood lining right, factory yes. and he wanted a black one so i got a what they call a long grain in black yep um and then obviously fitted out all of the the window winders and door locks and everything mm. were all re -zinked. all the fiddly bits yeah make all that nice redid all the internal door handles and i was saying about that stereo just keeping it nice yep. we're not not too big a speaker mm -hmm. it's because the head unit's got not yes. a lot of go in it and then you can see here now we're just starting to, to really get into assembly. The the felt that was on the floor I felt looked to be original because it right. had all the right cutouts. So yep. we actually just did the same cutouts in the okay. aftermarket. The yep. it's more acoustic yes. designed. Mm -hmm. So we put all that in it, and then new door trims. Um, obviously the seat belts we had done. New rubbers. All of those internals. So these were in pretty good nick. So we just cleaned those up and then we re-grease them all and yep. make sure they all work good. We rebuilt electric motors. So they're the rear window sliders. Yep. And all the chrome. So we put aftermarket like repo drip gutters. Right. And the little chrome strips around the back and then the top of the doors and that were original redone. Mm -hmm. And it already had a fairly nice exhaust on it yep so we just give that a good wire wheel and a clean up and a coat of paint same with the mufflers and all the chrome strips mm. around the windows have got yep. to get cleaned and yep. straightened and painted because the cobras were painted front and back and then we start getting into assembling all of those bits so all, all of the every component gets painted plated and then go through the <laughs> Some assembly form of treatment yep and I get a great sense of satisfaction looking at these things mm. where you look at it and go, yeah, that looks right. Yes. Yeah, so the right yeah. colours and... Nothing's out of place. The right shapes. Yeah. Once again, Phil was given a bit more licence with this one with the stainless and a bit more OCD from the factory. The, mm -hmm. the seal, the same, they went where the factory went, but a little bit different. Mm. And then the master cylinder on this um, was actually supplied from Mal because it's a different... Um, because the throws, the pedal throws the same, yep. so it goes to a different size bore mm. to get the right travel for the box. Then he supplies that with a braided line. Cool. Um, that's the Cobra plaque that goes on radiator support panel mm -hmm. down the bottom. Electric windows, so all those rubbers and, and grommets and, grommets and yeah. stuff have got to be done. The splash guards, my yep. front guards with those u butte Staples. Staples. Mm -hmm. Bumpers inside and out. They're all looking pretty sweet. And that, the inside of that bumper is better than the outside of my car. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and then alignment. So we, we the rear bumper especially, the, the alignment with that, sometimes we actually cut the, the factory bracket, mm. but more often not, it just needs a, a space, a top or bottom, yes. to, to get that shape around mm. the match. It's pretty rare that you just bolt one on. Yeah. They don't sort of go close. Doesn't, not that easy. Factory hinges, just got the... I think I might have bought replacement ones, actually. They're, so they're still original style, but um, in the gold zinc there. Mm -hmm. So putting that nice new engine in. And there's that clutch. So we put a... Mal just supplied the, the flywheel and everything to, to work with his system. So it's yep. a, a straight-up bolt in. All brand new. And then that's that internal thrust bearing. Yep. So it's got the pressure and then the other one's the bleeder. Yep. And the rear brakes, obviously some slotted and drilled. And it's all starting to come together now. Look in the goods. So I threw this one in. So that's um, Gretchy from Gretchy's 
car audio and whatever, and unfortunately he's been a bit crook. I rang him to, to do the Boss XC the other day and hope he's getting better and watching the show. But he normally looks after my air, con air conditioning for me. Yep. And that's Luke, so the boys are getting ready for fire up, I would say. He's mm -hmm. got the, it's probably running because he's got the um, vacuum pump there. Yep. Charging up the air con. Now, the owner rang me up and said, hey, I'd like to put a um, direct air, you know, like a like shield a, system shield on cowl. it. Shield cowl. Yeah, yep. I'm trying to think of the name of it yep. now, but anyhow. And they came out on the Mustangs. Okay. And I said, yeah, we can do that. I said, there's, there's the, um, the GT Ford Performance in Melbourne make one of those. Mm. And I was telling Darren about it. He said, I've got one of them. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> so he had, um, he had the black bit yep. on the top because he was going to put it on something and never did it, but he'd used the air cleaner. So they make an air, a, a fiberglass base. Okay. And because we had a bigger engine and mm. manifolds and stuff, we had to do a fair bit of modification to get it to fit and work. Yes. Because I wanted that rubber to seal correctly. So if you're going to have it, yeah, if you're going to have it, you want yep. it to work. Yeah. And they they came out on on some of the late sixty Mustangs. Right. So that's where the design concept, I mm -hmm. guess, come from. So we got enough bits, but we had to mess around a fair bit with it. And I, there'll be another photo in a minute because we ended up, I had a sticker and all made for the air cleaner to make right. it look as factory as I could. Yep. And if you look in that photo, you can see that the, the compressor for the aircon looks like a beacon. Mm. So I opted to give it a little birthday. <laughs> put a bit of black on it because like i said i wasn't a fan once the belts go over the silver on the yeah. pulley that quietens that down a bit yeah. but, I, but i tried to do it in a way that it didn't look i just painted it all black so mm. i left the back silver but it was really a way of just tuning it down a bit so it was a bit more blended fitting. in and yeah yeah so you can see it's silver there mm -hmm. in this next photo um there he is having a laugh must have been a good day um so yeah i just tried to tune it down yes. and when we get further in you'll see some finish shots so Got to get the boot done, so we're we're running with the factory look. Mm -hmm. So the most nights, the tail lights are in; they're all been done standard. That tank, look at that tank, now Ooh. done, and you're just going to put the carpet over it. And you won't see it, but anyhow, <laughs> Sacred tail lights with the looms, and then you can see the white mm, thing that was yep. was camo before, the yep. camouflage on it. Well, now it's nice and white. Yep, and then all of that stuff gets painted and zinced. So it must be nearly time to put the guards on. So the guards are on now. So that's that bigger upgrade with the brake. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to be able to keep, have the option of still running a 15 inch wheel. Right. So RRS do this twin piston PBR caliper. Yep. It'll still fit inside okay. the, um, the Contact, 15s. Contact, but a twin piston yeah. job. Yep. yep. So just a bit bigger than a standard. Okay. And now we're just starting to, all the wires are through and bonnets on. No glass yet, by the look of it. Front bumper, and there's a lot of steel in the front bumpers on yep. those. Yeah, heavy buggers. Now, a couple more videos. So this is just a bit of a walk around in the workshop. So they were the wheels that were on it when it came in. And he wasn't sure what he wanted to do, but I had Boss XC here by that stage and it had Simmons on it. Ooh. So that's, um, we ended up heading down that track. Yep. Ooh. Look at that, solid. You'll have that 1510 on the back. It's a bit of meat on the road. No rear spoiler. You like avoiding that spoiler, I don't blame you. <laughs> there you go. So that was at that stage. So the seats on this particular one, the previous one, I, Damien had the fabric and all, mm -hmm. and this one we didn't have anything. Yep. So I got on to Bennett Global Trim and he, I took the seats down, he stripped them. Yep. Got them welded and oiled and powder okay. coated and then re-foamed. And these were the foams and the trim that come off them. Okay. And I ended up 
actually selling these trims to a guy in Western Australia that just needed some original fabric to do some repairs on a right. on a, a car that didn't need restoring, basically. Yep. A survivor car, that's yep. what I was looking for. So I made sure I kept all of that stuff mm -hmm. and didn't just throw it in the tip. And of course, what we ended up with then is a, a complete um, restored interior. Mm. With the seats and the carpets and hood lining and pretty much a brand new car. And then that engine bay now, that's it pretty much complete. Yep. And you can see now the different chrome air cleaner on there and that air compressor with the belt nozzles all starting to look not too bad. Yep. And then that's the, the sticker I had made up. So the Ram Air. Yeah, yeah so man. on the the US Cobras or the, and the Cobra Jets and that sort of thing, yep. they actually called it a Ram Air. Yep. And then I had the sticker to made up to match this engine, so the 427 mm. horsepower, 427 cubic, cubic inch. inch, 575 horsepower, and the height and all of those that high performance and all comes from like the XW XY GT yes. era. Yeah. So yes. it was a bit of a play on all the yeah. Ford stuff and done. It works well specifically for this car. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got some undercarriage shots here. I don't know why I didn't have a lot of photos of the underneath finish, but these were when we took it down to Bosco to get a wheel on it. So right. I drove it into Wollongong from here because yep. it was registered still. So I yep. drove it into town. Um, I normally do a wheel alignment on the hoist with the tape, which normally gets me around for mm -hmm. an initial. So there's just some nice shots there of the underside up on their hoist. I must have been standing around with nothing to do, so I thought I'd take a few <laughs> photos. And I've got a couple of nice little videos in a minute from down there as well. So that one's getting close. No front spoiler. Glasses in. Um, got the badge on the grill. And they obviously didn't have any badges on the bonnet. I can't remember now. 100% sure on what the story was there. And then out the front of our place. Here comes a video. So this is um, out the front of the workshop. Mm. Yeah, Blackman blue car. Blackman blue. <laughs> Certainly, we're a good looking car. Yep. Don't sound too bad, either. And that bit of compression, <laughs> a few cubes, a bit of horsepower. So, was going. Um, Darren and I went for a ride just to do a bit of a test yeah. run. Make sure there's no bugs. Went down the survey, got a bit of fuel. We sort of put 20 in it and I went, well, 20 bucks and, well, 20 litres. And 20 then went litres, down and, yeah. and I, I wasn't going to fill it up, 27 no. gallons. <laughs> we put a bit of fuel in it because so, I could run it into town and, and get the wheel on it done. And then this is in at Bosco's. With so now Simmons. it's got the Simmons on it. So we'd had that discussion with the owner and he. The fact that it was um, entered to go to Summonats, he felt it probably needed a, something a bit more like that. And he liked the look of those wheels when he was here one day, so managed to hook him and Peter up to do a deal. So 18.8, 18.10. Bosco there, so they're a little bit nervous trying to get it on here so they ended up putting um, some blocks and stuff under it but I thought it was worthwhile. It gives a bit of a feel for the car with it running and moving around a bit. Does a good job Bosco. Bridgestone at Free Meadow. He's got a nice uh, Ford himself isn't he? He's, um, he's had a few and he's doing a um, like an XE Group C, okay. the red one at the moment, drop tank mm. and all. It's probably in the corner over there, you might yep. see it when, when the car moves. You know. Yeah, you know, he's a Ford man through and through. Mark, yeah, they marked his floor up, wasn't me driving. Whoop. <laughs> straight out of the paycheck, that one is. I reckon he would have been straight out with the Scotch Bride. <laughs> got rid of that. Tell by, and that, that's not a brand new workshop, that's just the way these guys work. Yeah. That's 
amazing to get a proper wheel alignment because I, when I did the Mustang, I drove it for a couple of years with the old tape measure wheel alignment. Yep. And then I had um, had a proper alignment done on it to the yep. RS spec and it made a massive difference okay. to the way it drove. So here's me and Darren out driving again. So I never really went out and give it a hide or anything because that's not what I do. But um, now this is a good example of how things change. Now this is on me on the phone before I knew how to do a video, I think. But yes. I, I don't have much else, so I thought I'd put it in because obviously I'm trying to get my little logo and stuff there, which mm. we just had sitting down there with a bit of double sided tape on it. But it does show the trim and all that you really can't see in the stills very yes. well. And there is another video that I found that's like seven minutes long mm. that I think I might put up as a separate video because we're already an hour 50 or something. Yep. Because it's me doing a walk around of the car, talking about the car and what's done to it and how it behaves yes. and all those sorts yeah, of things. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So we might make it a part two and put it straight up. So mm. if people are into it, yep. they can um, they can do that and sit on its own. So this was out the front doing a walk around. It really did sit nice. Mm. Um, and we use, oh, had the RRS on the front so it's adjustable yep. and the rear was already there. Um, we put Coney adjustables on the rear, okay. new ones. Um, and obviously just made sure everything lined up mm. and looks nice. And that's, I think, what gives the car its edge. It just makes you go, yep, it's a nice looking car. So you can tell by the plate's an ACT car, so it yes. um, operates out of the ACT and um, was entered to go to the Summonats. And at the last minute, the owner decided he didn't really want it to go there. He's a very private sort of gentleman. Yep. So I said, mate, your car, your decision. Yep. So it really hasn't been seen. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. And um, we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Yes. So thanks, Dale. Thanks, Helen. And thanks to Lovells. Because without levels, we can't keep doing it. And no. obviously, they they now got me running all over the countryside doing shows. Yes, they're working hard. So I think I've got Dale convinced to come down to um, to Motorex. Motorex. So we'll yep. be able to share the microphone down there and yep. do a, do a bit of work down there. And um, been trying to work out what to do about this build series because there's obviously a lot of interest in it. But there are a couple of other jobs I've done here at the workshop that I might be able to drag the photos out mm. and we might be able to do something with those yep. Yep. Um, there's a couple that come to mind so a couple little side jobs keep watching yeah. yep I've got some ideas check out the merch you like the shirt it's that's pretty true. cool eh? I've got my old one and you can yep. still get one of these yep and Dale's got the new one on yep. and they're available at astledesign.com yes so thanks for sharing your night with us or your afternoon yep thank you again Dale for coming along great to be here Howard and bye bye for now see you soon Howard pour himself a, a large gin. <laughs> a large Probably portion of. Rid of the bottle. Mm. Testing, testing, one, two, three. You know which camera to look at now, Howard?